Today we're going to talk about rational exponents. You can write a rational expression in an equivalent form using a rational exponent instead of a radical sign. That means instead of writing something as a radical, we can write it as an exponent. In general, that means when you have the nth root of x to the m power, you can rewrite it with the exponent of what's under the radical being the numerator and the root being the denominator of the new exponent. This can also be written with the n being your root and the m, or what's underneath your radical, coming outside and raising the entire radical to that power. Let's do some examples so that this makes more sense. In this first example, we're going to convert between exponential and radical forms. Here, we have x to the 3 over 7th power. How can we write that as a radical? Again, the x is what's going to be underneath your root. The denominator becomes the index. And the numerator is the power on what's underneath your radical. Another way you can write this is with the same index. Your radicand will still be x, but the 3 will instead raise the entire radical to a new power. Either answer will be acceptable. For this example, we need to convert to exponential form. To do so, the radicand will remain the same. It will be b. The 3 becomes the numerator for the exponent, and the index, or 5, becomes the denominator. This will be your final answer. Now we're going to simplify some expressions with rational exponents. In this example, we have 7 to the 1 half power times 7 to the 1 half power. Now there are actually two methods we could use to simplify this. The first method is by using the law of exponents. We could simply take 7 to the 1 half, and by law of exponents, when you multiply like bases, you add the exponents together. So we would actually end up with 7 to the 1 half plus 1 half. Well, 1 half plus 1 half is 1, so we end up with 7 to the first power. 7 to the first power simplifies to give us 7, and we're done. Again, that's just the first method. Another way to do this is by converting to a radical first. 7 to the 1 half power would convert to the square root of 7. Multiplying that by 7 to the 1 half power, which is the square root of 7. And now, when multiplying radicals, they have the same index, so we can actually multiply the radicands together, giving us the square root of 49, which we know to be 7. And again, you're simplified and you are done. Now let's figure out how to combine radical expressions. For example 3, we need to find the quotient in simplest form. We have the square root of 3 times the fourth root of 3. The easiest way to complete this is to convert both of these into exponential form. For the first one, the square root of 3, we will have 3 to the 1 half power. For the second one, the fourth root of 3, that will convert to 3 to the 1 fourth power. Since we're multiplying like bases, we add the exponents. 3 to the 1 half times 3 to the 1 fourth. 1 half is the same thing as 2 fourths. 2 fourths plus 1 fourth is 3 fourths. Converting back to a radical, we would have an index of 4, with 3 being the base of our radicand and 3 being the exponent. 3 to the third power gives us 27, and we cannot take the fourth root because we do not have 4 of a group to pull to the front. Therefore, our answer is the fourth root of 27. Let's try it again. This time we have the square root of x cubed divided by the cubed root of x squared. Again, the easiest way to do this would be to convert to exponents. The numerator, the square root of x cubed, 
is equal to x to the 3 halves power. The denominator, the cubed root of x squared, is equal to x to the 2 thirds power. By properties of exponents, when you divide like bases, you subtract their exponents. If we change both of these exponents so that we have a common denominator, 3 halves will become 9 sixths, and 2 thirds will become 4 sixths. So then we have 9 sixths minus 4 sixths, which gives us x to the 5 sixths power. Converting back to a radical, our index will be 6, and our radicand will be x to the 5th power. And that is our final answer. Now we're going to simplify numbers with rational exponents. What is each number in simplest form? First, we have 32 to the negative 3 fifths power. There are actually two methods we can use to simplify this. The, the first method is to use properties of exponents, and the second is to convert the expression to a radical expression. Let's first try this using properties of exponents. We know that 32 can be rewritten as 2 to the 5th power, so let's do so. Then, properties of exponents tell me that when you raise a power to a new power, you actually multiply the exponents together. This will give us 2 to the negative 3rd power. The 5's, when we multiply, cancel out, leaving us just with negative 3. However, we also know that we're not allowed to have negative exponents. This gives us 1 over 2 cubed. 2 cubed is 8, leaving us with 1 over 8. Let's try this again by converting to a radical expression first. Our index will be 5, and we have 32 to the negative third power. Properties of exponents tell me we're not allowed to have a negative exponent, so 1 over 32 cubed. Now, 32 cubed can get very messy, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take 32 off to the side here, and we're going to factor this out and see if we can find a group of 5 that we can pull to the front of my radical because we're finding the fifth root. Well, 32 is 8 times 4, so each of these is 8 times 4, 8 times 4. So we've got three eights. Well, let's look at our fours. That's 2 times 2, which we can pair up with my fours and make two more eights, giving me a total of 5 eights, which is what I wanted because, again, we're looking for the fifth root. So let's rewrite this as 1 over 8 times 8 times 8 times 8 times 8. I know, lots of eights. So since we have five eights, that's a group of five that we can pull to the front of our radical, giving us one over eight. Again, different method, same result. Now it's your turn. Give these six questions a go. We will talk about them tomorrow in class. Be ready.